All right. Sige. So, good evening everyone. Currently, we have uh, seven viewers sa ating Facebook Live. Again, if you're watching this video, you can join the Zoom link. Nasa description yung Zoom link and nasa comment section. Kung hindi kayo mahiya, no problem. Kung mahiya ay tayo, sige, doon na lang kayo sa Facebook Live, no problems. So, um, uh, last, ano ba ngayon? Friday. Uh, last Wednesday, we had the privilege to have Robbie as one of the guests. As you can see, na post ko rin kanina na he was featured sa ANC News. So, you know, this guy is one of the guys talaga to talk to when it comes to stock market investing or anything about the stock market. So, um, ngayon naman, ang topic kasi ng Wednesday was how earnings affect stock prices and, in the, and investment decisions. So, ngayon naman... It's all about Q&A session based on the discuss natin last Wednesday. Okay? So kung meron kayong tanong guys, you can you can type it in sa sa comment section. And again, if you want to join the call, feel free to do so. It's one of our advantages kung gusto niyo talaga magtanong kay Robbie um, directly. Okay? Sige. So let me start things off. Um, so Robbie, salamat once again for for having us as your uh, students for this no. <laughs> pleasure See, pleasure so um na, na, na mention natin yung EPS earnings per share at saka PE ratio mm -hmm. i think those are the two uh ano ba tawag ito valuations or financial matters na na discuss natin thoroughly sa last session so pagdating sa PE ratio is it safe to say that the higher the PE ratio, the riskier it is, or, or like it's overvalued masyado yung, yung specific stock na pinili namin kung mataas yung PE ratio niya. Ah, okay. So, well, uh, yun, yung like we discussed last Wednesday, we cannot, uh, hindi natin pwedeng i-take uh, as a single number lang si PE ratio. So, we have to put context into the, into the value of the PE ratio. Uh, katulad nung, uh, if you remember yung example ko kay Jollibee, right now, Jollibee is trading at around 24 times PE ratio. Tapos, uh, historically, over the past yun, yung 2013 to 2019, nakita natin ang average niya, ilagay na lang natin sa 40. So, from that perspective, uh, medyo undervalued right now si, si Jollibee. Kasi ang layo, nung, ang layo ng PE ratio niya today versus yung average PE ratio niya for the past six years. Mm -hmm. So, ganon. So, we have to put context into it kasi kailangan i-compare natin siya against historical performance or against their peers. Pero we cannot compare them uh, versus another company in a different industry. So, ganon siya. Uh, kasi hindi naman always ibig sabihin na na mababa ang PE ratio eh undervalued siya kasi minsan pagka masyadong bumaba sa case ni Jollibee no perfect example para stick na lang tayo with one example sa case ni Jollibee magtataka ka di ba you should wonder if you're not wondering you should wonder why is Jollibee right now trading at 24 times when for the past 6 years it was hovering around 40 times. Diba? So you should be wondering why that is the case. And so, pagka purely PE ratio lang ang tinignan mo, iisipin mo agad, ah, bibili na ako ngayon ng Jollibee. Kasi undervalued na siya. Kaya, kaya medyo dangerous pa din kung talagang purely PE ratio lang yung titingnan natin. Kasi we have to put some context into it. We have to understand, bakit nga ba bumaba yung PE ratio ni Jollibee from 40 to 24 in the first place? And right now, ang sagot natin dyan is the fact na tinamaan siya ng COVID. Diba? Nauna yung COVID sa, sa China. And then, uh, alam natin, I believe they closed 100 of their 350 plus stores in China. So, meron ka agad lost revenues for since February of this year until Medyo ngayon lang ulit sila nagre-reopen. Tapos habang nag-spread all over the world yung, yung COVID na yon, tinamaan din yung mga stores mo sa iba-ibang lugar. Most especially yung mga stores mo sa Philippines. So now your, your earnings for Jollibee or yung earnings ni Jollibee, yung sales ni Jollibee, 
they are expected to take a huge hit. Kahit pa siguro small consolation na lang din sa ngayon yung yung pwede sila mag-deliver, pwede mag-drive through, small consolation lang yun. But at the end of the day, a lot of their sales are generated through dine-in kasi nga laging puno si Jollibee, di ba? So, yun yung iisipin mo ngayon. Porke ba't mababa ang PE ratio ni Jollibee ngayon? Dapat ko na siya bilhin right now. Because uh, in my mind, or, or it seems like it's undervalued. Or do I dig a little bit deeper and try to understand why did it go down in the first place? Tapos, uh, dadagdaga, dyan na ngayon papasok yung, ano, yung, yung earnings mo. So, ano ba yung forecast mo pagdating sa earnings ni Jollibee sa next quarter or sa, ne- sa second half of the year or the next few years? How do you think the the company will respond to the economic hardships that are expected to to grow out of this pandemic stuff like that? Kaya um, hindi talaga siya pwedeng masagot in that manner na, na mababasho lang. Oo, oh, oh, talagang support yeah. lang siya. Hindi talaga natin pwedeng gamitin yung PE ratio as the deciding point agad na. Oy. Uh, nakahanap ako ng mababa P.E. ratio, yan na lang bibili ko. Kasi the P.E. ratio also is a sign of demand. Pag mataas ang P.E. ratio ng isang stock, ibig sabihin, mataas din ang demand sa kanya. And kaya ganun si Jollibee dati. Kaya ang index natin nasa 20 times lang, 15, 18 times yung P.E. ratio. Pero si Jollibee before this year, laging nasa around 35 to 40 to 45 times. Because a lot of people believe na malaki ang potential ni Jollibee. Kasi nga, grabe siya mag-expand, di ba? Ang, yeah. ang capital expenditure budget niya for 2020 was at, I believe, 14 billion. At the start of the year, parang yun yung inallocate ng kumpanya na gagastos nila para i-expand yung business. Right now, trinim down na nila yun to 5 billion. Binawasan nila. So yung budget nila na 14 billion, sabi nila ay hindi 5 billion na lang ang gagastusin ko. Kasi ganun kasama siguro yung tingin nila sa magiging ekonomiya ng ng mundo or ng Pilipinas over the past over the next 6 months siguro, stuff like that. So that will give you hints na uy, baka bumaba ang earnings ni Jollibee. And pagka bumaba ang earnings ni Jollibee later on, since denominator natin yung EPS, di ba? Yung sa, sa formula ng P.E. ratio, market price divided by EPS. Pag bumaba ang EPS mo, ibig sabihin, at kung, kung sa presyo ngayon, tas later on in the future, bababa ang EPS mo, tataas ang P.E. ratio mo on its mm-hmm. own. Di ba? Kahit hindi magbabago ngayon yung presyo niya. So, hindi din pwede sabihin. Kasi what if biglang bumagsak ng sobra yung earnings ni Jollibee this year for 2020? At current prices ngayon, 24 times ang PE ratio niya kasi nakabase pa siya sa EPS last year. Di ba? You have to remember, hmm. saan ba nang gagaling yung, yung PE ratio na figure mo? Sa price and then sa EPS, sa earnings per share. And yung earnings per share na yun, pagka umakyat, Ang earnings mo at na-maintain ng presyo, magmumukhang sulit si Jollibee kasi lalong bababa ang P.E. ratio. Pero pag bumagsak yung earnings mo, magmumukhang mahal si Jollibee kahit na hindi magbabago ang presyo niya. Kaya yun yung something we have to watch out for. Kaya hindi natin pwedeng i-take into a vacuum lang na, uy, mababa ang P.E. ratio ni Jollibee. We have to understand ano ba yung prospects niya in the future. So parang uh, Nice. Nice. Mm-mm. So uh, it's one of the factors. In summary, it's one of the factors for mm-hmm. valuations. Na pwede nating tingnan. However, mm-hmm. it's it shouldn't be a parang one lens lang na yun na yun. So there's more to it than meets the eye. Yeah. Okay. Sige. Uh, another question in pagdating naman sa navigation content lang ng um, First Metro Securities. Again, mm-hmm. guys, if you don't have uh, a broker yet, First Metro Securities is one of the brokers. Dito sa Pilipinas, in fact, it's one of the brokers that I also use. So, i-share ko lang sa dali yung screen. So, share screen. Here. Okay. 
as mentioned din sa online course guys, diba, ang, ang advantage kasi when you want to start investing in the stock market is that there are a lot of inform information na available na just like this one if you're going to like stock code natin is JFC that's Jollibee and then marami kang masyadong information na makita dito like the highlights the per share data yung earnings per share this is the thing that we have been discussing last Wednesday and yung PE ratio which is nandito sa baba price to earnings right so you can see for the past five years, ito yung performance ni Jollibee, 2014 to 2018. So you can use this information as part of your decision when it comes to investing. Kaya nga meron tayong quote na before we invest, we need to investigate. So yun, di ba? So Robby, ang tanong lang dito is, how, paano ba natin makuha yung latest na information? Kasi tulad nito, this is 2018. That's like two years ago. So mm -hmm. how, uh, how is there a way for us to access the current, the latest um, EPS or PE ratio or book value or sales ng isang company? Like where do we go? Yeah, okay. So yeah, so the, the website itself kasi automatically, automatically updates itself after a while. So... So, sa ngayon kasi, hindi pa siguro nag update yung website. Kaya yung pinakita kong examples nung, nung Wednesday came from websites that you can easily access no, sa Wall Street Journal, sa Bloomberg, sa investing.com. So, those are, those are all um, websites na libre naman i-access, libre gamitin, where you can find the latest uh, financials, financial data of, of the listed companies in the Philippines. So, pwede tayo dun mag-refer. Mag mm, okay. Yes, yes. So, marami tayong ano, um, other information na yes, pwede natin magunan. Uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm, madami. Even the, the disclosure website, kaya lang kasi pag sa, sa PSE disclosure website, medyo yung PDF file yung kukunin nila. So, hindi pa siya nakadistill. Hindi nakatable form. Unlike nung pinakita ko last, uh, last Wednesday na mga slides, talagang compiled na compiled na siya. So, uh, Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, Investing.com, and uh, Market Insider from Business Insider. Mm -hmm. So those are all good resources where you can find um, the data that you will need. Nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. So at least, kasi yun yung isang tanong na nakuha ko when I did a uh, one, one over one on one consultation. Na yung pinakita ko yun na, okay mm -hmm. guys, ito yun. Tapos sabi na, sir, bakit 2018? So why is it like hindi siya updated? So mm -hmm. you, you have a lot of resources that you can use rin besides yes. first method securities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, isang tanong rin, medyo technical rin is that since merong ibang-ibang brokers dito sa Pilipinas when it comes to stock market, uh, minsan yung price ng, ng Jollibee or whatever stock in a specific broker is not the same <coughs> sa ibang broker. So, bakit ganun? Bakit ah, daw ganun? Ah, ah, ano yun? Siguro kasi ano, madaming trades na nangyayari in real time. So, talagang baka function yun na by the time na by the time na tinignan mo sa ibang broker, na iba na talaga yung presyo. Pero, uh, all things being equal, talagang laging equal yan. Kasi they mm -hmm. all take the price that is listed in the stock market. So, if ever may nagbabago niyan, baka yung time it took you to switch from one broker to another, meron nang nag-transact at a different price. Possible yun. Or, baka yung may broker ka, may broker na nagagamit na minsan may konting lag lang. Pero, very, very rarely nangyayari yung lag na yun. So, it most likely has to do more with yung, by the time na tiningnan mo yung presyo sa ibang broker, nagbago na talaga yung presyo. May bago ng transaction at pro probably a different price. Mm -hmm. okay, we all so trade parang, at one exchange lang naman kasi so talagang laging pareho lang yan. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Sige. So, another question would be bakit ang bakit ginagamit ng stock market sang ng stock market ang PSEI as the reference of how the stock market in the Philippines is doing? Bakit yun ang ginagamit na na reference. Okay. Uh, kaya natin yung ginagamit kasi 
uh, gusto nating makita. Sila yung mga pinakamalalaking kumpanya kasi. They are the 30 biggest companies in in the, the publicly listed companies in the whole country. So, yun pa lang, i-consider mo pa lang yung 30 na yun, that is already a representation of essentially the whole stock market because they make up a huge chunk of the entire Philippine stock market. Uh, actually, minimeasure din naman yung, ano eh, uh, minimeasure din naman yung buong stock market talaga. Ang tawag natin dun yung all shares index. Mm. All shares, oh, oh, may, may makikita kayo all shares index. So, yung index na yun, lahat talaga, whether whether maliit, malaki, whether basura stock yan or, or blue chip, nako-consider doon. Kaya lang hindi siya tinitingnan kasi ano siya eh, medyo nakakagulo lang siya ng data kasi nga yung mga mas, mas, madami kasing maliit eh. So, there are hmm. more than 300 listed companies in the Philippines. But yung index natin, 30 lang. So, that means the index is 10% of the entire listed companies. Pero yung 30 na yun, yung 10% na yun, uh, tingnan mo pa lang sila, they are already the, the drivers of the economy because they are the largest companies in the whole country. So pwede mo na in a way, kung gusto mo lang makita yung distilled version of how the economy is doing, you don't need to consider na the, the smaller ones kasi minsan sa sobrang illiquid nila or sa sobrang inactive nila, makakaskew lang sila ng data. Kaya wala po mapansin sa All Shares Index eh, di ba? Mapapansin niyo. Pinapakita 'yon sa ANC, pinapakita 'yon, makikita niyo din 'yon sa mga sa PSC websites, pero they don't regard it highly because uh, a lot of people feel like the just taking into account the 30 blue chip companies in the in the Philippines is already representative of how the whole Philippine economy is doing. Kaya nga ang tawag diyan sa PSEI bellwether of the economy. Kasi pag maganda ang stock market, ibig sabihin maganda ang ekonomiya. Pag pangit ang stock market, ibig sabihin pangit ang ekonomiya. So now that the stock market is currently down, that means a lot of investors, whether foreign yan, whether local, a lot of investors feel like um, the future, the immediate future of the stock market is not going to be so good. And that lines up perfectly with what most uh, most brokerages, most most investment firms are saying when they report to the public that they expect global growth to to slow down this year. In fact, pwede pang mag-contract daw, di ba? I believe China ba yung nag-contract ang GDP nila for the first quarter. So that lines up perfectly kung bakit bagsak yung market natin right now. Okay. Yeah, so guys... Uh Totoo yun. If you're going to check the, the, the stock market, napakaraming companies yan. But uh, mm. obviously, hindi naman lahat maganda yung performance or hindi naman lahat na sikat. So the PSEI is consist, it consists like the 30 blue chip stocks ng, um, well, from the word P, it's Philippines. You know? Sige. Um, so, kung dito sa Pilipinas, meron tayong PSEI that consists of 30 blue chip stocks of the Philippines. Sa US, meron silang tinatawag na NASDAQ, um, S&P 500. So, is it the same with the PSEI na top 30 companies or is it more? Ah, okay. So, uh, it, it's, it can be more. So, depende kasi yan sa index kung ano yung gusto niya. Katulad ng NASDAQ, ang NASDAQ, ang mga compositions mo sa NASDAQ, mostly tech companies. So, hindi ka makakahanap dyan ng mga retailers, hindi ka makakahanap dyan ng mga mining companies. Kasi si NASDAQ, uh, puro tech stocks yung nakalist naka dyan. So, it's uh, an index na 30 companies yung, yung nakal... Uh, I mean, tech stocks yung nakalist dyan. Si S&P 500 naman, those are the 500 companies yung nakalist doon sa mm. sa index na yon the top 500 si Dow Jones naman if i'm not mistaken the top 30 biggest companies in the US naman yon si mm. Dow Jones uh -huh. so it really depends on the index eh kung ano yung gusto nilang i-measure meron kasing index na focus on tech stocks meron ding mga sub indices pa na mas maliliit na hindi masyado sikat kasi yung mga smaller companies ang kasali sa kanila so pwede ding puro 
puro hospital stocks lang, puro medical stocks lang, yung mga ganun. Mm. So, it, the index can be comprised of any number of, of companies. It can comprise of one particular sector lang. It can be exclusive to one particular sector. It can mix and match. So, it really depends on the on the ano on the objectives of the the company behind that particular index kaya lang natin binuview yung PSEI and by extension yung yung three major indices sa US na Nasdaq, S&P and Dow Jones because they contain the the best companies in the US so yun pa lang ang tingnan mo makikita mo naman na yung climate or yung temperature ng economy ng US by looking at those three indices pa lang Mm. Okay. So so guys, uh, Nasdaq that's uh, the tech companies and then S&P 500 like from the word 500 meron yung mga top 500 companies doon and then Dow Jones top 30 US companies. Ganun yun siya. Uh pagdating naman sa does it affect let's say S&P 500, Dow Jones and Nasdaq whatever is the performance of those in Indices, tama ba? Indices, indices. Yeah. Indices. In, indices. Does it also somehow can affect the PSEI in a way? Uh, uh, in on some days, medyo may days tayo na tinatrack natin. Especially kung, uh, especially kung medyo pareho lang tayo ng catalyst. Katulad ngayon, uh, the, the whole world is mostly concerned with development sa COVID. So usually, medyo tinatrack ng US kung kung up ang US, up din ang Philippines. So may may ganong correlation sila. Uh, but it's not perfect. We can't really say na when the US is up, we will be up. So it depends pa din on on whatever local developments happen. No? Mm. Tapos aside uh, aside from that kasi, meron ding dynamic jan na since emerging market tayo si Philippines and developed market si US, Minsan, pagka, kumbaga, pag overvalued na si US, pwedeng konti na lang yung nakikitang gains ng mga US investors or foreign investors abroad. And so, pagka feeling nila, uy, uh, malaki na masyado ang kinita natin from the US, I think, hindi na siya lalaki further, pwede silang mag-transfer, di ba? Pwede silang mag-exit sa US, ipasok nila to emerging markets like the Philippines. In which case, pwedeng uh, down ng US kasi merong mga local na events na self-contained lang din. Hindi katulad ng COVID, hindi katulad ng trade war na talagang grabe ang ripple effect all over the country. No? Pero yung smaller events like uh, yun, mahal na, mababa ang interest rates, stuff like that, pwedeng maging catalyst yun for, ano, for the recovery or the entry of foreign funds in the Philippines. Kaya nga, that's also one thing na, na pwedeng maging benefit sa atin. Kaya nga, di ba, if, you, if you'll notice in, in, on the news, a lot of people are still fairly positive that, we, that the Philippine economy will be able to recover relatively quickly after, after this pandemic is over. Bakit? Kasi nga, yung growth prospects natin, <clears throat> being an emerging market, it's still higher than the growth prospects of a developed market like uh, like the US. Uh, aside from that, yung interest rates sa uh, sa US near zero na. Sa atin medyo may konti pa tayong room sa interest rate. So medyo mas malaki yung pwede pang kitain ng mga investors sa Pilipinas. So kaya pwedeng mag-exit sila doon, pumasok sa atin. So the correlation is not always perfect naman. Uh, over time, uh, I've come to to realize over time that the more you integrate, the more you monitor the stock market, the more you will understand which events will will act as a catalyst for whether we will go up or down. Which events you can probably disregard. So ganan. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. <sighs> Okay. <laughs> Maano Medyo talaga ano? siya kasi oo. Oh, oh. Kasi ano siya eh uh, um it's not it's not it's not really hindi, 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 hindi naman siya yung super hirap intindihin. Pero uh, kung hindi ka pa talaga nagii-invest ngayon or hindi ka pa nagmo-monitor closely, medyo mahirap talaga siya i-grasp. Kaya uh, I tend to avoid 
saying uh, I tend to avoid making statements like pag up si US up din tayo kasi hindi talaga siya mm. like that all the time. Meron siyang core kumbaga hindi nga siguro correlation baka minsan natchatchambahan lang. Pero pagka world changing yung event especially nung onset nung pandemic in which nag nag ECQ lahat ng ng ibang ibang bansa yan pare-pareho ng galaw lahat pagbagsak mm. pero now that the that the situation is essentially calm na medyo nagda-diverge na ulit yung nagda-diverge na ulit yung performance ng US tsaka ng Pilipinas kasi nagkakaiba-iba na yung approach natin sa sa pag-handle nung pandemic eh Diba sa US nga, diba yung like I mentioned earlier sa sa ANC. Sa US, gusto na nilang may mga states na gusto nilang i-open na yung businesses eh. Yeah. Mag-o-open na sila ng sinihan at 25% capacity, mag-o-open sila ng malls, ng theaters, ng kung ano-ano pa. So, pero tayo, hindi tayo ganun, di ba? I'm sure the government will not allow that. Kahit nga, di ba, yung ano ngayon is yung mass gathering sa mga religious activities. Di ba, kahit yun nga, binawi na ng IATF, biglang bawal na ulit. So, mm-hmm. all the more yung mga sinihan. All the more yung mga basketball, whatever. So, medyo nagda-diverge na yung approach ng bawat bansa ngayon. And so posible din talaga na magkaiba na yung performance ng markets natin. Pwedeng yeah. sila bumabagsak or pwedeng sila umaakyat kasi right now medyo potentially good for the economy nila yung mag-open up sila. Kaya lang, ang danger lang nun is baka mas prone sila to the second wave. Kung ganun ka loose agad yung approach nila. Yeah. Similar to what happened with Singapore, with Germany. So magkakaiba-iba na talaga magkakaiba-iba na. Kaya hindi na ganun kalinis yung correlation ng US at Philippine stock market. Yeah. At so yun yung nakakatakot when it, when it comes to lifting the ECQ. Uh, maybe it's going to get worse. You know, different economy, pero maybe it's going to get worse kasi, I don't know, hindi na siya ganun ka-strict. <laughs> uh, well, I, ano talaga eh. Uh, it will, in, in the sense na dadami ang cases, pwede talaga. Uh, yeah. it, from that perspective, I think it will get worse. Siguro, yung pwede nating tingnan. Kasi nga, uh, I don't, awan ko, I'm not, I'm not going to speak for, for, for especially the government. Pero I don't think the ECQ naman was designed to last until, until wala na talaga yung pandemic. <laughs> diba? Kasi talagang I think two years pa yan bago talaga completely mawala. Diba? Yeah. So hindi mo naman pwedeng i-ECQ ang isang bansa for two years kasi talagang wala na. Impact. Wala ka na. Oh, by the time na mawala na yung ECQ, wala na din siguro ang ekonomiya. Di ba? Parang ganon. So, the the design of the ECQ was, I believe, even from the start, to give the government time to be able to assess properly the situation and to build treatment facilities, stuff like that, which uh, so far, no? So far, at least uh, over the past three weeks or so, medyo mas dumadami yung recoveries kesa sa deaths. So, yeah. uh, so from that perspective lang, kasi talagang the, the mere fact that the government is considering lifting, it means they also see the merit in in also parang trying to spur the economy ulit. Pero mas careful lang nga tayo. Yun lang naman yung maganda din sa atin. Medyo mas careful tayo compared sa US kasi sa case natin, wala naman nagpo-protesta sa US kasi di ba may nagrarally na <laughs> yung sa Michigan, yung gano'n na let us work, bala na magka-COVID kami, basta let us work. So sa atin, medyo mas unified naman tayo. Di ba? Medyo mas madali tayong kontrolin kumpara sa kanila. <laughs> Mahirap yung bahala na magka-COVID kami. <laughs> basta let us work. Eh. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Mahirap yun. Delikado Ay, naman na- masyado yung ano. Kaya ang hirap, ah, uh, Uh, mahirap mahirap maging presidente ngayon. Oo, mahirap. Talagang <laughs> ano yan, sakit sa ulo talaga yan. So, uh, very very hard decision to make yan. Yeah. Sige. So, meron din uh, medyo hindi siya related masyado sa stock market, pero maybe you have your insights about this. Um, <laughs> com- coming from Melissa, ang tanong niya is, ask ko lang po, it looks like ang um, 
Forex. Ang Forex ngayon ay trending na sa Pilipinas. So, bakit hindi pa rin siya legal sa Philippines? I don't know if you have... Ah. Ah, siguro yung infrastructure lang. Siguro the, to, to monitor. Even kasi yung stock market natin, hindi pa naman siya ganun ka, ka-advanced, di ba? Uh, even short selling nga, wala pa. Wala pa. Yung mga real estate investment trusts, wala pa. Wala pa. Oo. Uh, so, siguro, hindi priority masyado yung Forex kasi nga, uh, yung infrastructure required to, to, to run it would be extensive din. Kasi nga, yung Forex markets are open 24 hours a day, 5 days a week, di ba? Uh, tapos yun, uh, they want to prioritize muna siguro investments that are local. Kasi kung Forex trading lang yan, Ano lang, ang kita lang ng government niyan talaga siguro is the taxes that the Forex brokerage will pay them, di ba? From the commissions. Pero wala siya masyadong benefit sa overall economy aside from those taxes. Uh, kumpara dun sa, kunwari, uh, mag introduce ka ng real estate investment trust, which is a, para kang, para kang pwedeng mag-invest sa isang property na hindi mo kailangan bilhin yung buong property. So, para kang bibili ng kondo, pero imbis na pagka nag-invest ka sa kondo, na buong kwarto kailangan yung bilhin mo, doon talagang kahit pira-pira so ng 1.8 or 1.12 to pa kondo, pwede mong bilhin. So, mas, hmm. uh, so yung, yung kasi, yung mga real estate investment trust na yun, helpful siya to the economy because the benefit goes to the developer itself. It gives the developer more capital to pursue other projects that will make more money, and in turn, it will also help the local economy, di ba? So, yeah. kaya, I think, uh, mas priority din naman talaga dapat yon kesa yung mga forex brokers na, forex brokers kasi madami ka naman makikita online. Di yeah. Ba? So, hindi, uh, hindi siya legal in the sense na wala kang mahahanap na local forex broker. Pero, I, I don't think, hindi ko, hindi ko lang din alam kung Kung maghahanap ka ng forex broker basis na nakabase sa labas and as of now lahat ng forex broker nakabase sa labas. Sa labas. Di naman din nata bawal. Di ba? So kaya lang wala siyang benefit masyado sa economy natin. Talagang I'm I'm thinking yung taxes lang. Yung taxes lang na naibibigay ng ano ng brokerage na yun. Yun lang yung benefit sa economy. So it's very very limited as compared to pursuing the improvement of our stock market, you know, making sure that a lot more companies are IPO, di ba? Yung naglilis sa stock market, introduce ka ng short selling, uh, yung mga real estate investment trust, yung consolidation ng, ng bond market and ng stock market into one. You know, yun yung mas medyo may benefit talaga na mas, I think mas mararamdaman ng mga Pilipino. Not just investors but even yung mga workers sa, sa buong Pilipinas. Yeah. Pag, uh, yung REIT, Real Estate Investment Trust, uh, malapit na ba siya na magkaroon dito sa Pilipinas? So... Yes, malapit. Actually, kung hindi lang nagka-COVID, they, they were starting to do roadshows na. Uh, before, I think nag-close tayo, di ba nag-ECQ si Davao right after araw ng Davao, mid-March. So, mga two to three weeks before that, nag-roadshow na sila sa... Cebu, Iloilo. I think sa Davao, nakapag, hindi ko lang sure kung nakapag-roadshow sila, pero alam ko may schedule na din. So talagang kung hindi lang nangyari ito, ang I believe around this time, late or mid-April yung target na launch ng REITs natin. So it was there talaga. It was that close to to being available for investors. Uh, yun lang. Yeah. Since, uh, yun. So since nagka-delay delay i'm sure pagka okay okay na yung sitwasyon where whenever that may be tsaka nila yung gagawin available kasi right now uh, baka hindi siya priority ng mga investors eh di ba hmm. so hindi maganda yung investing climate right now so i'm sure they will wait for things to get better before reintroducing the rates uh, yeah hopefully within the year pa din so reit is going to be another form of a mutual fund um, ano siya, kunwari, actually listed pa din siya sa stock market. 
listed siya sa stock exchange. So, you can buy it just like you would buy SM, Jollibee. Ganun din yung mm. exact process. Ang difference lang is that pagka REIT ang binili mo, ano siya, ang laman niya, ang underlying asset ng investment mo na yun is a building. ba Property. And yung i-re-release kasi na REIT, yung Ayala REIT yun eh, Ayala Real Estate Investment Trust. If my memory serves me right, tatlong properties yon Around Makati area ata lahat. Or mm-hmm. arabas sa Metro Manila lahat. Uh, so, ibig sabihin, yung kikitain mo, yung dividends na pupunta sa'yo, it will be derived from the performance of those three properties. So, yun yung ah. difference nila. Uh, yun lang yung difference nila. Pag bumili ka ng Jollibee or pag bumili ka ng Ayala Land, ang iniinvestan mo is yung buong Ayala Land. Diba? Performance ng lahat ng properties ni Ayala Land. Pero pag bumili ka ng Ayala REIT, ang pinag investan mo is yung tatlong buildings lang na ang may-ari pa din si Ayala Land. Ayala. Pero yung kita lang ng tatlo na yun yung, yung pagkakakitaan mo. Pero regular mm-hmm. yung dividends. Kasi yung rental income na ma-generate nung, nung mga properties na yon after taking out all of the expenses and stuff like that, it will be given back to the investor as their dividend. Okay, got it. Then so, siya. technically, ang REIT pa natin, the mom, if, if ma-launch na siya is Ayala, which is you're technically investing dun sa holdings company na yung tatlo yung uh, dun sa oh, metro Parang gano'n oh, ang parang, ano basta niya. Basta tatlong building. Oh, it's like you're investing in three buildings. Hmm. So, hindi kasali okay. dun yung mga abriza. So, hindi, wala kang makukuhang income derived from the sales of abriza, of, of, of Glorieta, of Greenbelt. Your income, the dividends that you will get will all be derived lang from the revenues of the three properties that are disclosed. Okay. Got it, got it. Ito, uh, common na question. Natanong ko rin mm. sa'yo before. <laughs> it's coming mm-hmm. from Charlie. If mag invest kami today, saan maganda to invest for a long term? What companies? Ah, okay. So, how long? <laughs> Depende yung how long eh. Um, Let's say, five years? Five Gan- years, Okay. So right now kasi uh, right now kasi di ba we're we're probably entering a possible recession diba? possible recession and so when a recession happens uh, usually yung yung demand yung consumption it slows down di ba kaya nga siya pumup- pumapasok ng recession in fact kaya tayo pumasok sa recession ngayon <laughs> kasi walang demand walang consumption Kasi lahat tayo nasa bahay. So, uh, if you're thinking of investing long-term and you say five years, no, you should make sure that you invest in a company that um, will be able to recover quickly once the recession is, is, is done. And so, with, with that said, siguro your, your considerations will be companies that are stable, Companies that are well-known, companies that have uh, good brand recognition, and companies that are essentially giants. No, yung medyo mahirap kalabani ng ng kahit sinong kumpanya lang. So, kung the more the more that they serve the essentials of the people, the better it is for you. So, in that regard, siguro kung long term ang inisip mo, we can stick to the to the biggest companies out there like Ayala Corporation, SM, dun kasi mahirap magkamali. Di ba? Mahirap magkamali kasi sa sobrang laki nila, they, they essentially drive the whole economy. So when the economy recovers, most likely isa sila sa mga magbe-benefit agad. So SM, Ayala Corporation, uh, aside from that, you can look at companies na utility companies. Diba? Si Globe, PLDT. Kasi all the more ngayon. Ngayon ng Meralco. pandemic. Meralco, yes. yes. Um, pagka naka-recover naman na yung economy, pwede mo ulit yung i-consider. Kasi uh, they serve a basic need. Nagbibigay pa yeah. sila ng dividends. So, ganun lang yung 
uh, right now, ganun yung pwede nating i- i-consider. Uh, especially kung ganun kalayo yung ano natin, kung ganun kalayo yung horizon natin. Kasi sila yung medyo relatively safe after all this is said and done. Diba? Uh, we will yeah. always consume power. Diba? We, will, we yes. need that. Uh, we need we need SM naman kasi they offer a lot of services. Banking, uh, yung mall operations nila, which is um, much needed pa din naman right now. Retailing, stuff like that. So they should benefit from that. We can probably avoid na lang yung mga companies that are super super specific no yung highly specific in their in their markets yung masyadong discretionary pag sinabi kasi nating discretionary uh, yun yung mga tipo na hindi mo priority you you buy them because you can but they are not your priorities like yung mga bags shoes <laughs> they are yung mga ganun eh ngayon now with the with a possible recession looming that is not something that you are going to think about. Di ba? Yeah. Para hindi mo priority yung, ay, gusto ko ng coach, gusto ko ng Gucci bag, gusto ko ng ganun. So that, that would be the furthest from your mind. What you yeah. want right now is yung stability lang talaga. Save money, save for emergencies because we don't know how long the, the pandemic will last, stuff like that. Ganun. Nice. So, marami tayong ano, uh, you can, to be specific, ang na-mention na companies like Globe, uh, SM, Ayala, Jollibee is also good. Pero, yun nga, you, ha- you also have to do to do your own research about it before you even invest. And, yeah. ano ba tawag nito? Like, um, investing in the stock market for the long term is actually a really good platform talaga. Parang, ganda talaga siya na discard if you're just going to invest in the long term. So, okay. Okay, ito. This is a question coming from Ronel. Yung kanina kay Charlie yun. Mm-hmm. Hey, Ronel, is, maganda ba, sir, from investing to trading? Which is more advantage for the long term? Or magawa na ng another account? So, I think, ang ibig niya sabihin is that sana mas okay uh, if you're going to be a stock trader or to be a stock investor. If so, kung, let's say, kung pagsabayan mo yung dalawa, how, how do you go about it? Mm, okay. So, uh, it really, uh, it, it depends kasi on how committed you are. Definitely, the more active you want to get, the more committed you have to be. Because uh, the more active you get, the more time you need to devote to learning, to studying, to, to monitoring, especially monitoring. Uh, ang trading kasi it seems very attractive and it is naman talaga kasi once you are able to figure out trading um, it can be very lucrative pero you have to commit to it and when I say commit to trading uh, you really have to put in the work Diba? Some people take a long time to master trading. Some people take a short time to master trading. But uh, the point is you have to really commit to wanting to trade. Kasi nga, it's not like when you start, when you decide to trade, immediately you will consistently make money. Diba? Hindi siya ganun kadali in that regard. Learnable siya, pero hindi siya ganun kadali in that regard because a lot of dynamics come into play when it comes to trading kailangan mo pang mahanap yung personality mo when it comes to trading. Ano ba ang reaction mo to volatility? How risky are you? How aggressive are you? Those are things that uh, only you can answer as a trader. So those are things that you have to find out for yourself. And how do you find out about it? You have to actually trade. And uh, um, unfortunately, no, when you begin trading, more likely than not, you you will lose money. Kasi nga, you're practicing it. Diba? You're establishing different rules, different setups, different scenarios. You're learning about all of that stuff. And even now, ako, I trade, pero even now, I'm still learning. So, ganun siya ka, ka, ka never-ending na journey that you have to keep on learning and relearning and learning new things. So, 
it is hard in that regard to hindi ka committed. I think I was fortunate lang din na na stockbroker ako. So I had to learn about them. So hindi ako pwede mag-quit eh. I had to learn about them because I'm a stockbroker. So kahit pa nung umpisang nagte-trade ako, nakaka-experience ako ng sunod-sunod na losses, hindi ako pwede mag-quit kasi trabaho ko yun eh. So, <laughs> oh, di ba? So I had to learn about it. Pero I was thinking kung hindi ba ako stockbroker, kung talagang iba ang trabaho ko pero gusto ko mag-trade, would I be able to stick it out? So that's something that you have to be able to answer yes. Kasi you really have to stick it out. Kaya nga ang advice namin lagi pagka gusto mong pumasok sa trading, liitan mo lang yung capital mo. Kung pwede, 20% lang ng total pera mo yun lang muna yung i-devote mo to trading para kahit mawala yung buong 20% na yan, which is medyo unlikely naman. Pero sabihin natin, talagang practice ka na practice. No? You really want to learn. Kahit mawala pa yung 20% na yan, at the end of the day, it's still just 20% of your total portfolio. You will not lose sleep over it. The big mistake that uh, a lot of enterprising traders make is by overcommitting a large amount to trading agad. Kung meron silang 100,000 na pang-invest or pang-trade, 80,000 doon, ilalagay nila sa trading. Kaya pagka nalugi sila, pagka hindi maganda performance, they quit trading forever. And trading is lucrative talaga. Kaya nga gusto ko yung, kaya ko pinag-aralan talaga yung trading because this is something I believe that you can do even when you're old. So just imagine being able to make money even when you're 60, 70. Because all you need is a computer. You can do it from anywhere. Diba? You can do it from anywhere. Yeah. Diba? All you need is an internet connection. So, ibig sabihin nun, kahit retired ka na, kahit hindi ka na nagtatrabaho, pero kung sanay ka mag-trade, pwede ka pa din kumita kahit matanda ka na. I cannot see any other, diba? Uh, that is one of the few uh income generating methods that I can think of na magagawa natin kahit matanda tayo. So that's there's the advantage in that. Kaya limit lang siguro sir yung capital. No? Yun lang yung magiging advice ko. Kasi wala akong pwedeng sabihin when it comes to how risky you are, how ano you are. Kasi talagang you will find that out for yourselves. Kasi bawat tao magkakaiba talaga. Ako, part ako ng mga trading groups. Pero hindi kami pare-pareho ng iniisip doon. Kasi may kanya-kanya kaming horizon. Yung iba kaya tumutok sa stock market buong araw. Ako hindi ko kaya tumutok kasi may iba akong trabaho. So may mga yeah. ganyan dynamics. So you really have to find that out for yourselves. Uh, kaya limit your capital muna initially. Yeah. So totoo yun. Uh, iba, iba, iba talaga. You have I think in in anywhere, regardless if it's going to be a stock trader profession or a businessman or you're an employee, you just really have to know yourself first. You have to be self-aware about who you are and yeah. yung risk tolerance mo. Actually, marami, marami siguro tayong nakilala na they don't even have emergency funds, but they are very aggressive when it comes to business and investing. Yeah. But they, that's who they are. Ganun sila. Yeah. Tsaka ang ano kasi oh tsaka ang ang weird kasi sa trading is that counterintuitive siya. Yun yung mahirap actually sa trading eh. Kasi sa kuya sa business or in your profession, nire-reward yung pagiging parang uh, yung positive way of being stubborn, di ba? Yung never quit, never ano. Di ba it it's usually rewarded. It's usually a good thing if you are the type of person ah, I will never quit until I make this right. Diba? That is rewarded when you run a business. Diba? That is rewarded when you are working because it shows grit. Diba? Counterintuitive siya sa yung active trading. trading. Kasi sa active trading, dapat mabilis ka mag-give up. Diba? Mabilis ka mag-cut <laughs> ng losses. So kaya kaya di ba I I've read multiple articles saying na ang daming mga tao na super successful in their industry in their profession like lawyers, doctors, people like that. Pero talagang when they transition to trading, nahirapan sila kasi nga sobrang 
opposite ng expectations pagdating sa trading. Sa trading, dapat alam mo kung kailan ka, mabilis mo malaman kung kailan ka nagkamali. And once na ma-determine mo na nagkamali ka, cut ka agad. Sa, sa in real life, no, in our, in business, in profession, in, in, in work, when you identify something is wrong, you work harder to make it right. Di ba? You don't quit. Di ba? You, you, you dig deeper. Di ba? And you push, push harder to make it work. Sa trading, konting loss pa lang, dapat cut ka na. Hanap ka na lang ibang opportunity. So, sobrang counterintuitive niya. Yeah. So, ganun siya. Kaya siya minsan mahirap for others. Ganda yun. Maganda yun na, na, na thought, you know, like counterintuitive siya. Na, mm-hmm. ano, there are some principles that you apply in your life that's not matched with when it comes to like yes. stock trading. Yes, na, ano, yes. Yeah. Saka baliktad talaga siya. Kaya, kaya, may, kaya, I keep repeating, you have to know yourself. So you really have to know yourself. Kasi mahirap tanggalin yung ganong attitude eh. Diba? Especially yeah. kung nakalakihan mo na. Mahirap siya gawin. Pero hindi mo siya pwedeng dalhin sa trading. Kasi in yeah. trading, if you are stubborn, if you if you cannot take a loss, diba? if you are not able to take a loss, ang mayayari niyan, bibili ka ng PLDT at 3,000 pesos per share, ahawakan mo siya until 1,000 pesos per share na <laughs> siya. So, wala ka na nun. Diba? Wala ka na nun. Kaya it takes a lot of experience to be able to understand that. All right. Thank you, Robbie. Ano yun, maganda yun na, na thought for the day. By the way, guys, uh, si Robbie, meron to siyang another thing to do at 9 p.m. So we already we only have like three minutes left. Ito, rin, ito lang yung response ni Ronel based sa yung answer. Nahihirapan daw kasi siya when it comes to uh, studying technical analysis. Mm-hmm. So... so uh, ano ba tayo ito? Sana may seminars for technical analysis. Actually, they do conduct that. Um, First Metro Securities are doing that. Siguro sa ngayon na medyo hindi pa siya mangyayari kasi nga of the COVID situation. But eventually, uh, if if there are, we can also announce it sa atin na group. You know, so that you can also meet Mr. Robbie Samson live in, in the flesh. Magpapicture. <laughs> Tapos, yeah. Sige. So, Robby, um, before we end, anything that you want to, anything you want to say or how can they access you or um, yeah, anything, last words before before the next meeting? Yeah, okay. So, siguro, one thing that uh, I would I would like to leave you with lang, no, for, for tonight is, yun, uh, in everything you do, especially uh, in investing, no, but in everything that you do, you really have to understand the core concept of what you are doing. So, katulad nung, yun sir, yung, yung tanong ni Sir Ronel na nahihirapan siya intindihin yung technical analysis. So, you have to understand ano ba yung purpose ni technical analysis? Ano ba yung purpose ni technical analysis? Bakit ko ba siya aaralin? What is the purpose of technical analysis? Essentially, the purpose of technical analysis is to help you as a, as a trader predict what will happen in the future. And ano ba yung future na hinahangad mo? So, in terms of investing, ang future na hinahangad natin is yung bibili tayo sa 5 pesos, maibenta natin siya sa 10 pesos. Always higher, di ba? So, ang hinahangad natin is gamitin ang technical analysis para makahanap ng stock na malamang sa malamang aakyat. And kung ganun pala ang point ng technical analysis, ano yung direction ng, ng chart na gusto mong hanapin? Yung paakyat. Di ba? Yung upward, ang, di ba? Isang, isang way lang naman yan eh. Yung paakyat ang trajectory niya. Imbis na pababa. pababa. So, pag tumingin ka sa chart, Pumanap ka ng paakyat. <laughs> so that's a good starting point. Di ba? That's, that's your starting point. Pero alam mo ngayon kung ano yung, kung bakit ka nag-aaral ng technical analysis. So with everything, not just in technicals, but uh, with everything Sir John will be teaching all of you, it's better if you use that mindset from the start pa lang para alam nyo agad yung purpose nung tinuturo sa, in, sa, sa, sa inyo ni Sir John. Kasi that will make it easier for you to digest. That will give you 
uh, the kumbaga, the mental capacity to 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 form ideas immediately even upon receiving the information so yun siguro yung uh, gusto kong message no in the same way the pe ratio ano ba point ng earnings di ba kaya nga start pa lang sinabi ko bakit importante ang earnings kasi pagka kumikita ang kumpanya madaming bumibili ganun yes. siya ka simple so humanap yeah. ka ng kumpanya na tingin mo lalaki at lalaki ang kita paano ba lumalaki at lumalaki ang kita ng isang kumpanya pag dumadami at dumadami yung bumibili paano dumadami at dumadami yung bumibili in the case of Jollibee pag dumadami at dumadami yung branches niya Pag kumukunti at kumukunti yung branches ni Jollibee, ibig sabihin, liliit at liliit yung posibilidad na kumita siya. So, parang talagang drill it down to its purest form para mas madali nating ma-gets ma- yung yung information na, na hinahanap natin. No? So, if you need to contact me, no? we, we have uh, more sessions naman in the, in the future. But if you need to contact me yun, you can add me naman, you can message me on, on Facebook, Robby Samson. No? Uh, I would be glad to help you out. Uh, kung gusto niyo mag-open ng accounts, kung gusto kung, kung may tanong kayo about the stock market, uh, I can I can give Sir John or siguro Sir yun, you know naman yung yung work number ko. So feel free na lang yeah. to give it to them na lang para they can contact me. Uh, better kung Viber. Kung may Viber kayo, better kung Viber kaysa Facebook kasi mas nag-check ako ng Viber. But yun. Uh, okay. So yeah, but aside from that, yun lang sir. Yun lang yung ano ko, parting words ko for tonight. Sige. Ayun. So once again, um, Mr. Robbie Samson or Sir Robbie, maraming salamat for for having us as your students for tonight, <laughs> you know, for an hour. And um, definitely, maraming akong natutun ako personally, and they also said they also learned a lot of things from you, which is good. And um, next week, May eighth, we have our third session with Sir Robbie, no? And it's going to talk about, or the topic is more about the value investing. Um, yun, maganda yun, value investing. Diba? So, which is, kung mag-value investing tayo, parang nagiging Warren Buffett na tayo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, ganun guys, see you on May 8th. It's going to be at 8 p.m. Sir Robbie will be our, our teacher by then. <laughs> and we will be his students. So, see you. So, again, Robbie, thank you so much for being part of this. And, uh, See you, Sasanan. See you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. See you. See you. Bye bye. Good night. Bye bye.